What's going on, Internet? Iron Jordan here. So it's that time of year again. <laughs> it is July. You know, we are on the dawn of a new set, a dawn of a new ban list. And you know what that means? That means that we're getting into rotation talk. The boogeyman dreaded rotation talk that everybody in an eternal card game fears and loathes and dreads. Obviously, you can see that we are on the Dragon Ball Super Card Game community discussion group, which is uh, probably your best source of information when it comes to the uh, Dragon Ball Super Card Game. Uh, on top of the official page, everything gets posted here for the most part. You can find deck lists, you can find content creators, you can find discussion, as the, the name implies. If you have not joined this group and you play the Dragon Ball Super Card Game in any capacity, it is well worth your time to hop on over and check it out. So I wanted to highlight this just real quick. So Melvin Hansa, who is a content creator for the Sensu Pop YouTube channel, very good quality YouTube channel, very nice guy, uh, very positive community member. Definitely go check his channel out. I'm not going to talk about his video in itself. Obviously, you should go watch it if you want to uh, know what the contents of his video were. But touching on the wide range here, you can actually see uh, he's talking about rotation. And uh, the reactions compared to the comments are not a great ratio, right? This is a this is a topic that always gets the DBS community in an uproar, and obviously brings content creators like myself to the fro uh, forefront to just talk about it and give our opinions, which are things that people watch YouTube videos for, apparently. So, like I said, not going to touch on his video at all, but the subject of rotation itself is a honestly very cut and dry situation there are two camps there's a camp of mostly like magic players or pokemon players who play an eternal game that have rotation in a format right magic has so many formats as modern it has commander it has standard it has vintage it has legacy it has popper magic has so many historic pioneer it has all these different formats right and it only has one that has rotation. So for people that don't know, rotation is a system in card games used to, to do two things. It balances the game easier and it pushes product. It is a twofold thing, right? If people have decks that they've been playing forever and they love that deck and it's the only thing they like about that game, they are not incentivized to buy new product. So rotation forces them, if they want to continue to play in a competitive or even semi-competitive manner at like locals in an environment or whatever, you have to then buy product to uh, supplement you know, a new deck. You have to move on, right? The other, like, the other thing that rotation does though, when it comes to balance, is that it makes it so that you don't have so many unintended interactions on with, with something new and with something very, very old. Now, this is Yu-Gi-Oh!'s biggest problem. This is Yu-Gi-Oh!'s absolute biggest problem. Yu-Gi-Oh! has been around for 15 or 20 years. I actually want to say 1996, so I want to say that's 15 years. It's been around for 15 years, and it has no set rotation, and it has one eternal format, right? As somebody who plays Yu-Gi-Oh, as you can see my avatar on Facebook right now is a, is a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Um, as somebody who plays Yu-Gi-Oh, I understand this very deeply. I also, as a Magic player, understand why rotation is important. Now, as I say in, the, in my comment down here, I really don't care about whether or not DBS gets rotation or not. But I understand that if... DBS never gets rotation. We will be in a constant cycle of one eternal format that never that never has any other branching formats. We'll never get a modern. We'll never get a popper. We'll never get a commander, which I don't know how commander would even work because it's basically already commander with the way that the game plays. We'll never get other formats as long as we continue to have one non-rotating format, right? We'll also be stuck in this power vacuum of power creep, ban list. New set, power creep, ban list, right? A lot of this was spurred from the fact that we got that announcement um, a couple days ago that the we were going to be getting a very big ban list on July the 17th, I believe. So that's in about two weeks, a little less than two weeks. It's July the 8th today, so we've got, I mean, yeah, a, a week, I would say, um, until we get this big ban list, or a little over a week until we get this big ban list, right? So this obviously stirred a lot of people up and talking about like, well, is rotation the answer? Or is this big ban list just like a semi-rotation? Well, I have a newsflash for you guys. 
Power creep is essentially rotation. When you go back to Yu-Gi-Oh! and you say, oh man, I can play everything from Yu-Gi-Oh!'s history. I can play all the way from cards from Legend of Blue Eyes. I can play Kaiba Man in my deck. I can play Marauding Captain. I can play the Dark Magician. But like, how good are those cards really in the current format? Blue Eyes and Dark Magician had to have cards specifically printed for them from uh, 2015 to 2017 and beyond to even be playable cards because they're so outdated in terms of game playability, right? You can't play Maneater Bug anymore. I mean, technically you can. You can throw three of it in your deck if you want. It's not banned. It's not limited. Throw three Maneater Bug in your deck and see how quickly you lose, though. Power Creep is Rotation. How many people in Dragon Ball Super are still playing with their uh, Set 1 Gohan decks? Or their Set 1 Vegeta decks? Or their Set 1 Champa decks? Nobody. Because they're not good. They've been power creeped out, right? That is kind of the problem with the argument of, oh, I want to play with my cards forever. The second problem with this argument, to me, and again, like I said, I'm not even, like, pro-rotation in DPS. I'm, I'm very much could care less about this, but... The big thing that I'm coming from here is that so many people are upset about even the idea of rotation that they won't even understand the fundamentals of why it could be good for the game that they play. They're so busy saying, oh, the game will die as soon as you rotate everything. I want my cards to be valuable forever. I want to be able to play with my cards forever. Not understanding that the core fundamentals of if they implement rotation, they have to. If they don't want the game to die immediately, they have to implement an eternal format. So here's what I would offer as a solution, right? I think this is something that helps the community and has people on both sides of the fence. Now, obviously, I am pro-rotation. Like, I think it's a good thing overall. But I, like I said, I could care less if it ever comes to, to DBS. I really could care less. Um, if we just have this eternal format with bands, like, whatever, like I said, I play Yu-Gi-Oh! and I'm not screaming for rotation on Yu-Gi-Oh! You're never going to see me screaming for rotation in this game. You're never going to see me actually physically advocating for it. But I will tell you why it is a good thing overall. This is what should happen in my opinion, and just some random YouTuber with 200 subscribers on the internet, right? You say, hey guys, the format that you're playing right now will never change. There will be ban lists, there will be erratas, there will be limits, all that other stuff. It will stay exactly as it is. You can play with from set one onward all the time. It is, it stays the way it is. However, when the new block comes out after Unison Warrior, we are going to be introducing a set rotation format, right? And you can take the format that we have right now, the eternal format that we have right now, and call it like eternal, or like whatever you want to call it. Make it Dragon Ball themed or whatever. Call it like, I don't know, past, or and then call the new one future. I don't know. Call it something, right? It doesn't matter what you call it. Leave this format the same. Leave it with the ban list, and a limit list, and erratas, and all that other stuff, and leave it the way it is. And then when the next block comes out, go, okay, starting from here, this is the only set that is allowed to be played in this new competitive, officially supported format, right? And that's it. And then whenever we come to the next block, so everything will be played within blocks, right? So if a block is like, this block has been like six sets, right? It's spanned over a year. Unison Warrior set 10 was our first was our first set of this block, right? And we've had like six sets in the block already. So if you just do it like that, where like each block is over a year or it's like two years or whatever, then it's very simple to just go like, hey, look, you can only play with the cards inside of the block. Kind of like the way that they were doing uh, pre-releases when set 10 first came out, where you could only play with cards that were inside set 10. And then when set 11 came out, you could only construct your deck with set 10 and 11 cards. Just do it like that, right? And it seems, it just seems very simple because you might say, like, well, who would who would play that deck? Well, competitive players would play that deck. People that wanted to play that format would play that format. People who were tired of the Eternal format, let's say they didn't touch Vegets, or they didn't touch Frieza, or they didn't touch Red Broly or Dark Broly, or they didn't touch whatever deck that you hate, and you hate playing against it, and the only, people will only play that in your meta, right? You gotta play that other format, where those decks don't exist. And yeah, there might be something else to generate it over there, but it's a new format. When I get tired of playing standard in Magic, which is all the time, let me tell you, a new standard set comes out, I play it for two months, I drop it, right? You know, I play it a little bit, drop it. You know, go to play in Commander. That's what I mostly play in Magic. I actually just picked up Modern. Picked up a budget Modern deck. And uh, have been enjoying that a little bit. But, like, I have options in Magic. You have options in Pokemon, too. Two, think about this. 
two of the top three games in the world for card games, Pokemon Magic, Yu-Gi-Oh! Two of those games have rotation, and they're doing just fine. They're doing just fine. Pokemon is actually probably bigger than than Magic now at this point, thanks to the, the big YouTuber, uh, like the Paul brothers and stuff like that, exploding in uh, Logic, you know, just going like, hey, we're going to buy all the expensive cards, and people, like, pushing the game, you know? Pokemon's in a healthier spot that's ever been. And Magic, even though Wizards is the worst company to ever exist, I can't believe I'm even saying that when Konami exists, but Wizards is, like, one of the worst companies ever, and Magic is thriving. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that you can go, man, I hate Standard, and instead of quitting the game for two months, you can go play Commander. As it stands right now, I mean, think about this. I, I Recently, as somebody who has been in a very bad spot with DBS, until set 14, I love set 14 so far, and we'll talk about that in another video. It's got me excited about uh, DBS again. Before set 14, in sets 12 and 13, and mostly in Battle Evolution Booster and stuff like that, I did not want to play this game, man. I didn't want to play it at all. Mecha Frieza, Dark Broly, Red Broly, King Piccolo, all these decks, they were just so unfun to play against. Blue Baby, very unfun decks to play against. They just... <sighs> and instead of going to another format and being able to play another format that I actually enjoyed, I just stopped playing for the most part. I played every once in a while. Built Launch. Launch is cool. Launch is fun. I still like launch. But it, for the most part, if I wasn't playing launch, I wasn't having fun because nothing else was powerful enough to deal with the format, you know? And that's that's what you gain when you offer more formats with rotation. I would love to see Bandai incorporate more officially supported formats in their game. I would love to see Popper exist in this game. Could you imagine Dragon Ball Super cards, like commons? Remember, back in the day, we used to build our decks out of commons and uncommons. It was, it, back in set 1 and 2, your deck was mostly commons and uncommons. You might play an SR here or there, especially when we got to set 2. You might play a Kale or whatever. You might play like four, like a play set of Kale. But set 1, Blue Green Vegeta, you didn't even need to play the Big Broly in your deck. I didn't. Played just fine. Won so many tournaments in a row. It was great. Imagine Popper in this game. And that's that's something that rotation could bring to us, man. The rotation brings the need to have other formats. They bring rotation and they immediately go, okay, cool. We're introducing a common format where you can only play with commons and you play uh you can only play with leaders that are commons or like whatever, which most leaders are commons or uncommons nowadays because they've moved away from the rare leaders, thank God. But you can't play with promo leaders. You can only play with the set leaders, right? And you can only play with like, you know, the set leaders, and you can only play with commons. Sounds really good. And then you keep the eternal format the same, and you go, okay, cool, here's a block, and you can only play with the, the competitive format in the block. And then you host tournaments, and you go, okay, cool, this is the standard format tournament where you can only play sets, what, I don't know, 15, 16, and 17. Cool, sounds good, and people will play it because competitive players will be drawn to the prize out. And guess what? Now your cards don't lose value. Because the Eternal format's still there, and it's still popular, and it's still probably going to be the most popular format going forward, you know? It doesn't matter if the standard format falls on its face, as long as it doesn't die, which it's not going to as long as it's officially supported. I don't know, that's just how I feel about it. I, I feel like a lot of the people who are against rotation, I get the fear, but I don't understand the unwillingness to listen to the very valid points of the people who are pro-rotation, or even the people who've just experienced it, right? You'll hear people go like, oh, well, Naruto died because of rotation. Well, Naruto died because it was a bad game from the start. Bandai had issues with distribution back in 2000, what was it, 2008, when the game started, 2006, something like that. It, the game died in 2013, and it wasn't because of rotation. It was because of Bandai. This game is attached to a much more popular IP and is doing quite well. It could be doing better, but it's doing quite well. I don't know. That's just that's just how I feel about it. Let me know. Let me know what you guys think, if that would be a good solution. I personally think that would be perfect if they literally just said, look, this format stays the way it is, and we introduce standard. And we just create standard out of thin air in the next block. That's how I would do it, and that's how I would... Uh, everybody gets what they want. The people who want to play a standard format to get away from uh, the format that we're in now could have it, and the people who uh, want to play eternally can play eternally if they want. And then you keep up the ban list for both ones. Obviously, the one for standard would be smaller. 
And then you introduce something like Popper or introduce, you know, I don't know, whatever you want to do. There are so many different avenues for formats that you can have in this game that just have not been explored by uh, Bandai. So yeah, that's it. I know that this is mostly just like me talking at the screen. Like I said, again, go watch Melvin's video. Uh, he does offer some good insights. He does give some good points as to like why rotation is good uh, and why he's against it. And um, some some other points that uh, I definitely think are, are worth checking out. So like I said, check his video out. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next one.